Hi, this is Mo Volans for Tuts Plus, and we're actually in Reason 7. Well, Reason 7.1, this is the very latest version, and I'm just going to show you something to do with external instruments, external MIDI instruments, and I'm actually going to show you three things. I'm going to show you how to set them up, how to maybe control uh, some MIDI controllers during the setup, then I'm going to show you how to record the result in, and then I'm going to show you how to twist that result in an interesting way. So we're hopefully going to hit three different sort of techniques. Okay, so as you can see now, we've got our external MIDI instrument in the rack. So I've sort of skipped the first section, I've already done it. So here's one I prepared earlier, and it's basically rooted to one of my MIDI outs, okay? Now this external MIDI instrument is just, you know, it's in instruments, and it's just really easily inserted into the rack. And then once you've got it in there, you like I say, you can just uh, root it to your uh, specific or correct MIDI out. And I've coming out of my remote SL, this is going into a base station, and uh, it's just really easy to to root that. And then once you've done that, you can just play it like you know any other synthesizer or keyboard, making sure it's on the the right channel. Um, we'll go to external MIDI instrument one. There you go. And you can hear me messing around with the frequency, and that's because you've got one knob on the external MIDI instrument which may seem a little limiting, um, maybe they could have put a few more on there, but what it does mean is you can uh, manipulate sort of a key parameter. And in most cases, this is gonna be the cutoff frequency. And I've got this assigned to uh, controller number 105, uh, because this is the, the filter cutoff control for the base station. And then once we've got that, that'll control the cutoff. And I've then got that assigned to the mod wheel. So you can go to edit remote override mapping and you can learn from source and you can just move any knob you want on any controller and it will sync up to that knob. So then you've got direct control. So you can see if I move the mod wheel, there's movement on the external MIDI instrument. And this will record in the same way as any other MIDI controller. And in fact, if we go to the sequencer, you can see that I've recorded a simple part and some cut off as well. And you can switch this on and off because it records it into a different lane. Now, the reason you can hear this is because it's going into an audio track uh, which is already monitored. So you can see below here, we've got this audio track one. So if I sort of take this monitor off, you're gonna see it coming in or not see it coming in, but you won't hear anything. It's only when I hit the monitor that you're gonna hear everything, you know, in your headphones or in your monitor track, in your Q-Mix. And you would do this by creating a new audio track. So just in the same way as you usually would, opening it up and making sure it's a stereo input, if it's a stereo instrument, and then choosing the right um, inputs. And I've already done that here. And when we go into the sequence here, we can hit record. Let's just get it back to the start. And you can see I've done exactly the same with the second audio track, but it just goes to show you, you can record the result of that MIDI, um, MIDI instrument. And of course, you could have multiple MIDI instruments. Uh, it'll record on as many tracks as you activate or not. And all you'd have to do is just activate that little record button there. Once you've got that, it's a carbon copy of your MIDI. So we can go ahead and mute the MIDI and just play back the audio. And I'm going to double click on it. And this is where it gets interesting. So, so far we've set up our MIDI, we've triggered our external instrument, and we've got it coming into an audio track, and we've recorded it. But now we can go ahead and we can sort of twist it in unexpected ways. And by double clicking it, you can see all these handles on it. And this is really the same as Recycle. If you've ever used Recycle, and this was a program that Propellerhead's made to generate Rex files that play back in the Dr. Rex or indeed in your DAW in time. So if you change your tempo, the, uh, the audio file automatically changes tempo as well. This is sort of built into Reason 7 now. 
The real difference here is it automatically generates the handles for you, but you can move them around and stretch the parts. So I'm just going to do that just for this one part, you can hear it. So you get some really interesting sounds. Now if you stretch them too far, it sounds a bit strange, but if you stretch them just a little bit, you get some quite cool effects. And obviously you can change the groove, so with vocals or with uh, maybe sort of drum loops, you can completely change the groove. In this case, I'm just going to leave it as is because I want to show you something. If we right click and we go to bounce and we go to bounce clip to rex loop, you'll see it appear up here in our sort of file manager. And now if I double click it, a new rex, Dr. Octo Rex player will appear and we've now got that in, our, in this uh, loop player. Now it does record it dry because the effects that I've got on, we'll go back to the mixer, uh, are actually sends. So I can recreate those just by copying exactly what I had on that channel. And let's go back to the rack. And now we can have some fun with the file. If we click uh, select slice by MIDI, you can see exactly what's playing. And then if you click slice edit mode, we can go to reverse, for example. Maybe click some reverses in there, change the pan of some of the parts. And then we can use the synth engine to resynthesize the sound. And of course we can reprocess this, we can modulate it, we can automate some of these parameters. But it's a really nice way of taking your audio, your synths or your external samples, bringing them in, recycling them and then putting them into a new synth engine and completely switching and changing uh, what they do. So in other doors, other DOWs, you can do this of course, but the speed you can do it in in Reason is pretty scary and it also allows you a sort of immediate satisfaction because you get that audio straight in and straight into a player and it plays back in time but you can synthesize it. And I just really love the workflow. So if you've got external synths and you've got Reason, this might be one for you to think about. Uh, and if you haven't got those things, maybe it's time <laughs> you get them. But um, this is just a, hopefully a new technique to you and uh, something that is going to be useful for you if you're a Reason user or you're thinking about getting Reason. If you want to see any more Reason tips or you want to see any more workflow involving you know, synthesizers and hardware, let me know and I'll try and fit it in. As always, leave a comment and I'll try and get around to all of the requests if I can. Thanks and bye for now.